Okay. Good morning, gentlemen. Allow me to give a little bit more uh, detail on the biographies of the two experts in the panel as we start the session. So, first of all, on Mihailo, forgive my pronunciation, Mihailo. Um, Mihailo is a PhD in economics, but also holds the title of Assistant Professor for the Scientific Field of Quantitative Methods. Mihailo has 20 years professional experience in telecoms, as well as in the post of Serbia, where he has for the past 14 years been a member of the board of directors responsible for all IT, electronic communications and development. In 2014 to 16, as a member of the executive board, he contributed to the achievement of the best business results in the history of the post. In 2017, he worked as an e-government advisor in the cabinet of the prime minister, of course. So Mihailo has much uh, credentials in the Serbian Chamber of Engineers with licenses for responsible design and contracting engineer telecommunications networking system. He's received the award of the Ministry of Science, Technology and Development for the government of Serbia in 2002 at a public call for the best young researcher and scientist. So um, he's been quite accomplished right across the board in terms of several books, monographs and 30 expert scientific papers not least across information and communications, e-business economics, but is also presented at leading domestic and international conferences, such as Wonderland AI Summit today. About Goran. Goran Lissanin is a similar expert coming from industry with 20 years experience in ICT domain as well. From an engineer and consultant to Fortune 500 companies in the area of IT and strategy, to IT infrastructure, digitization, software development, and data science. Over the last four years, Goran has been busy working in Hawaii, CEE, and Nordic regional offices, helping companies in the digital transformation process and developing their adaptation of 5G, AI, and IoT solutions in the new business models of offering today. Goran has a master's degree in computer science, which is specialization in strategy and innovation at MIT in the USA, obviously one of the world's leading colleges too. Today, Goran is Chief Digital Officer and AI Industry Development and Ecosystem Director for CEE and Nordic Region at Hawaii. So gentlemen, you're very welcome. Thank you very much for taking the time today. Who would like to step forward first, Goran or Mihailo? And today's topic will be making AI applicable for industry and national economy. Who would like to kick off? Um, thank you very much. Um, I would like to kick off and introduce uh, Mr. Mihailo through my uh, few slides. Hello, everybody. Thank you for, for introduction. Oh, obviously, it took uh, a little bit more time than was planned, but I will share my screen now and give you some information that I would like to share concerning the, the vision that generally Huawei today has. So uh, when we started today, uh, I know that my uh, colleague, Li Shukai, has already uh, keynote and he introduced the platform of the Huawei. Uh, most probably I think that that was the nice thing to see as um, I know that um, generally the ecosystem is not very well uh, introduced with what we are doing today. Uh, we choose this subject, and I'm very happy that we have Mr. Professor uh, Jovanovic to give us from the first hand impression and plans and vision how one country is implementing and adopting AI. But why AI only now? That's one of the questions that uh, we are getting a lot from the industry. Even the industry, very traditionally uh, oriented, is trying every day to implement all these cases that we are having now popular on the market. So. If we will look, generally we have computing power already on the place. We have algorithms, first one from 1950s and the one that we are using now are from 1980s. And of course we have the data. And uh, the question is why everything happened now. And of course it was not only the computing power. What we can notice now is that there is a lot of devices with enough computing power that can replace, for example, some um, NASA computer centers that were launching Apollo in that time. So the one today phone is enough for different kinds of calculations. In the same time, 
this is bring us to the edge and helping us to process data, not only in data centers, but generally on the place where they are created. From the other side, one of the biggest, uh, let's say, drivers for AI is generally the 5G and Wi-Fi 6 with the technologies that came up a few years only ago. Why is that? All the benefits from AI that we are expecting in the industry generally, it should happen in close to the real time. And this is something that till now were all very expensive or closely to impossible. Now, if we will speak about latency that we can uh, achieve with 5G, we're speaking about theoretically one millisecond. Just to give you an idea uh, about, um, let's say that performance, uh, human brain is working on three milliseconds. That means that today 5G is having latency better than human brain. And of course, the coverage and, and all the number of the IOTs that today 5G and new technologies can cover. Uh, of course, we will mention uh, in performance in terms of, of the speed of this kind of networks. And from the probably one of, of, of least, uh, last but not least important uh, thing is that uh, Moore law is not working anymore. Generally, it's challenged. And today, to get the better performance, and this is what is happening, and this is, we have examples in our company in, in, in different kinds of uh, product lines, network and storages. We're using different kind of chipsets to specialize resolve some tasks that are not only general CPUs. And this is bringing us to the edge. This is bringing us to the simplicity and bringing us to the uh, point that we can uh, implement AI fairly, let's say, price performance reasonably. And we don't need any more so complex, um, generally, environment because we already have network. We have cloud that is giving us this performance. We can have on the edge, on premise, different devices for not big budgets. And we can, of course, now start to use AI. And generally, industry is very hungry for, 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 for AI cases, and we can see it everywhere. So AI is not something that everybody is mentioning as a future, and AI on the edge is mentioning as a future. It's something happening today. It's something that happening in our industries, in small companies, big ones, and there is a different kind of cases. And of course, uh, some of them we are seeing today, some of them we are even willing to demonstrate to you anytime if you will call the uh, Huawei office or some of our partners. But these things are bringing us some huge explosion of data and generally huge explosion of, of innovations. And just to give you the example that uh, let's say three years ago, IoT become something that is very like, like AI, uh, very buzzy word, yeah, very fancy word. Everybody was speaking about it, but we didn't see that much. And from the other side, we had something that can be called IoT like five years ago, but we didn't use that much data. Now we cannot, let's say, function if we are not using it. And just to give you some, let's say, um, prognosis, but a very close one. In 2021, Gardner is saying that IoT devices in the world will be around 7 billion sold and implemented. It means that 1 million devices per hour will be implemented or 300 devices per second worldwide. Three of them in the industry, two of them in the consumer market. And all of this is bringing all this ICT infrastructure that we were telling you in some kind of investment in, in, the, uh, in the national GDP. So today, uh, calculations by our, our consulting companies and of course by Huawei in the first place is that if you, every country will invest, any country in the last 20%, in ICT, it will have increasing 1% of GDP. What well, is the only industry giving this kind of feedback? So we are speaking today by some, pro, let's say forecasts between 16 and 26 percentage of national GDP growth based on AI in 2030. So this is amazing numbers. And this will only happen if generally, uh, on the national level, on the European level and worldwide level, society will start to accept AI as general purpose technology. And this is happening even uh, that we don't notice that in everyday use of the, of the internet, phone, and, and any other uh, tools. So right now we are in some phase that we have 
a little bit collision between technical development and social environment. And generally, uh, not only social environment, but even the, on the national level, infrastructure in terms of the law, ethics, and even the physical infrastructure. And we hope that very soon, we will have this kind of mutual improvement of technology and social environment, and that we are looking forward that AI is becoming new general purpose technology and it will influence on the GDP growth. So I'm very honored to invite an, uh, our guest today, Professor Dr. Mihailo Ivanovic, Director of the Office of Information Technologies and e Government of Republic of Serbia. And he will tell us from the first hand how uh, one country is going to implement AI technology and we are speaking about Republic of Serbia. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, very informative and very inspiring to learn that industry is starving for AI right across all those many verticals you mentioned. So over to you, Mihailo, and uh, welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Yes. Perfect. I'm... Can you can you see the presentation? Yes. Yeah, loud and clear. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. So I am really grateful for the opportunity to speak and at this year's Wonderland AI Summit. On this occasion, I would like to greet the host, Mr. Hubert Grelish, all participants, and as well as Mr. Goran Lichanin from Huawei and Professor Nenad Filipovic, uh, next keynote speaker, uh, director of the university in, in Kragujevac in Serbia. I am uh, Mikhail Ivanovic and I'm director of the Office for IT and in Government. Uh, the previous Serbian government, led by the Prime Minister Anna Brnabic, set digitalization and innovation as a government priorities. And I am really very pleased that the same Prime Minister Anna Brnabic will lead the next government as well as with the same vision and, and, and the leadership. Uh, at the end of it, its uh, term, the previous government of the Republic of Serbia adopt three very important strategies which provide directions for the further work and reforms that will enable the continuation of the transition towards economy and society, which are based on knowledge and innovation. Uh, these are strategy for industrial policy of the Republic of Serbia, strategy for smart specialization in the Republic of Serbia, and strategy for the development of art artificial intelligence in Serbia. All three strategies are synchronized and the degree of competitiveness of domestic economy and sustainable economic growth largely depend on their implementation. With the adoption of the strategy for the development of artificial intelligence, Serbia became the first country in Southeast Europe and the 26th country in the world to recognize the importance and potential of artificial intelligence. All three strategies identify similar problems and suggest each in its own way and in its own domain activities that would best address those problems. Uh, in short, these are huge human capacity strengthening, innovation for the purpose of creating added value and increasing productivity, more competitive and productive economy, and stimulating entrepreneurship and startup ecosystem. 
One of the key strategies for further growth and development of the Republic of Serbia is the strategy for development of artificial intelligence for the period 2020-2025. Artificial intelligence is without a doubt one of the greatest horizontal potential of ICT sector and managing to use it for the purpose of economic growth, employment and better quality of life earlier than others would be our great advantage. In the region of Southeast Europe so far, no country except Serbia has published its AI strategy. According to the readiness index for AI, which provides comparatively comparable indicators for all countries in the world, Serbia jumped 20 places this year, 2020, compared to last year. And we are now ranked 46th out of uh, 194 countries measured. We are the first in the Balkan region, which includes Croatia. And compared to last year, we have overtaken Greece, Bulgaria, and Romania. Uh, we will especially support the application of AI in the following areas, health and medicine, agriculture and forestry, transportation, and smart cities. In order to encourage the development of AI, we will continue to insist on the opening of, of data. As in many other areas, the previous government lay, laid a good foundation for this. Namely, the national open data portal was established in uh, 17. A year later, in 18, a comprehensive legal framework for data opening was established with the law on electronic government, the government of the Republic of Serbia, with the support of national parliament, introduced the obligation for the state authorities to publish their data in machine readable and open format on the open data format. In the future, we must also work on creating partnership with the private sector in order for them to start the practice of data transfer. Uh, the implementation of strategy has already started with the allocation of funds from the science fund with a total budget of 2.2 million euros for 20 AI projects, six of which are basic research projects and the other six AI implementation projects. Several institutions participate in most of these projects which improves cooperation between different scientific institutions from different fields. For the development of testing of AI-based AI solution, it is above all necessary to provide an appropriate high-performance computer infrastructure. There is a great need for a platform through which high performance computing resources would become available to scientific research organizations, faculties, but also to small and medium enterprises and startups. They are not able to provide the necessary resources on their own. The Office for IT and the government has signed the, an agreement with Huawei on the establishment of an AI, an AI platform which will be available to public administration and universities throughout Serbia. Also, the government of Republic of Serbia will establish state-of-the-art high-performance computer systems together with the software platform, as well as make it, this infrastructure available to 
academic community, science and technology parks, public administrations. And we have also signed several MOUs, one of them uh, for uh, high performance computing with NVIDIA. This will be the most important thing for further development to, in terms of infrastructure to install such kind of infrastructure. And it will give our country a great advantage over everyone else in the Western Balkan region. With the aim of, of, of rapid development of AI, the government will establish an institute for the development of AI, which will deal with the research and applications of AI in various fields with a strong multidisciplinary approach and in cooperation with other scientific research institutions, economy and the public sector. The goal is for the Institute to become a regional center that will enable researchers from Serbia to work on world-class projects. This will contribute to higher quality education as well as faster development of the common economy in Serbia. Once we have done all of this and fully implemented the strategy for the development of artificial intelligence adopted by the government at the end of its previous term, the Republic of Serbia will position as the regional leader in AI development. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, thank you. and helpful talk of Mihailo and also Sora. I'd like to open up with a couple of questions, perhaps one immediately off the bat, Mihailo. When you uh, mentioned that um, Serbia will be a leader in AI and of course the relationship between the private sector and the government, then um, would you have any uh, comments or views for how that collaborative relationship can be um, put into a model, not just across the region or Europe, but even globally. Um, and part two of that question could be how, what is the role of globalization in even a post globalized world where we are finding even as we join the event today, um, we're moving from a localized geographical footprint to an online one. Have you any comments about um, which regions may be more uh, ready to step up and perhaps any other remarks in that regard? From, from Thank you. Of course, from our point of view, I, I will give you a detailed example how we would like to co co coordinate and cooperate with private sector. I already mentioned, for example, national uh, open data portal. Uh, we are uh, forcing all government institutions and local self-government to open the data uh, on, on national uh, portal. But it, it's uh, not all. Uh, according to our uh, new AI strategy, we would like to, to open the, the data from private sector and to have their own data on, on uh, our open data portal. So we should consider the way how government uh, will coordinate with the private, private sector and our open data portal is um, connected with European open data uh, portal. So all our data are directly connected with our uh, European uh, open data portal. Okay. Second, yeah. yeah. Second, this uh, I explained this intention to to open our government AI platform and uh, high performance computer system. We would like to 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 provide this infrastructure not just to government and universities but for the private sector, for startups, to encourage them to use AI 
softwares and develop uh, softwares on our government platform. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mihailo. And Goran, was there anything you wished perhaps to add to that? I have another question now as well. Oh, um, everything is clear. Please. Okay. Um, Baji asks, how will this growth in GPT based in AI reflect on people who will inevitably lose their jobs in AI? In other words, um, if I paraphrase Baji, forgive me, how can we match the startup uh, needs or recommendations to use AI with the uh, increase in growth based on the value it will deliver? Have you any comments on that? Yes, of course. Uh, honestly, I'm happy to, to hear these kind of questions because uh, uh, we are educating all the time people inside the ICT industry and then end users and people that are not connected with AI and generally with technology are afraid about their jobs and everyday life and intrusion that AI is happened to make. Uh, honestly, AI will, uh, in this, let's say 10 years, we can expect that generally AI will only improve our lives and generally improve industry because AI is not on the level to replace human being. So it can just raise some quality. And, and with uh, raising the GDP grow growth, it, it means that all the social environment, including the salaries and including even if somebody will stay without a job will be much higher. So anyway, AI will just improve it for, for the okay. part being. I don't know what will be in 20 or 30 years. Yeah, that's a very humble and honest remark. And then a final question. Um, what is the first process to be followed when implementing AI in an organization? What will the first step be for an organization? Which is a great question. Yeah, well, I think that the, uh, all the institutions and generally organizations should think about small targets, uh, uh, fast and small wins. First, to, to, to learn how, how to work with AI. And AI is not by itself a whole information system. It's just some part of the software, call it advanced algorithm helping to improve. So start with small things and then uh, with fast win, you will get better success. And okay. then you Very can good. build it further. Yes. Okay, well, on that note, um, I'd like to thank you, Goran Lassenin, and also Mihailo Yovanovic uh, for a very interesting talk, and uh, not least highlighting the opportunities for startups to embrace AI, but also the role between the private sector and the government as well. So thank you very much for that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Wonderland. Thank you. Thank you. So,